This video is brought to you by NyQuil, the coughing, sniffling, sneezing, pass out on your kitchen floor medicine. Pretty big announcement from SE today as they tackle the very competitive $100 to $150 microphone market. Now, it's been getting pretty crowded lately with mixed results, but unlike other mics in this price point, SE already has a very well-established lineup of mics, including the V7, a well-respected mic for stage use. So how will these mics, the DCM3 and the DCM6, match up? Now, both mics have identical bodies, so let's focus on the DCM6 for this. Great build quality on the body, all metal design except for the mount. The sock is quite thick, especially at the tip. <sighs> and beneath that sock, well, there's an interesting presentation to be sure. Good to note here though, there is a secondary pop protection underneath the grill there as well. Now, where the two mics actually differ is back here. You have an internal preamp booster, the dynamite button, much like the Dynacaster, on the DCM6. The DCM3 does not have one and it just operates as a dynamic. Of note though, if you want to use the preamp, you do need to operate the mic as you would a condenser, which means you need phantom power to make use of the little button at the back there. And I guess just to prove that these are the exact same capsule, here you go. Both have the DMC3A capsule. As for specs, again, both mics have the exact same specs. They're both cardioid dynamic microphones, 40 hertz to 18 kilohertz, and have a sensitivity of neg 52 dBV per pascal, which, by the way, is more sensitive than an SM58. Now for the off-axis rejection of the SE DCM3. This is me speaking about three inches off the front of the capsule. Now I'm about three inches off the side of the capsule. And now I'm speaking into the rear of the capsule. Now for the plosive rejection test of the SE DCM3. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Now for the proximity effect test of the SE DCM3. This is me speaking about mm, three to four inches off the front of the capsule. Now I'm right on top of the capsule. Three to four inches, right on top of. Now for the handling noise test of the DCM3. Oh. Now we're gonna get this started with the DCM6 versus the DCM3. This is the DCM6 with the little button in the back for the boost, the gain boost you can get. It's a little preamp inside of there, kind of like a cloud lifter or fat head that you can activate with your phantom power just by clicking this button and turning your phantom on. We'll get to that in a second, but this is how they stack up side by side. That is impressive amounts of gain. Okay, so now we have the same waveform between the two microphones. The gain for this is set at past uh, three o'clock. It's at about 3.30 for this microphone. This microphone, the gain is set at not even nine, meaning I have less than a quarter of the gain to power this microphone. And that's because of the, the dynamite inside of it. You're gonna get a bit more noise with this. However, you're not gonna have any of the preamp noise from your interface. So if you don't have a lot of gain to throw up onto a microphone, this is gonna do it for you. That's the power of the DCM6. Now we have the DCM6 along with the Dynacaster. And this is what it sounds like with the preamps off. I'm going to have to gain up both of these mics quite a bit in post. What do you think as I go between them? And I would be remiss if I didn't actually line up the DCM6 with the preamp on up against the Dynacaster with the preamp on. The Dynacaster has a few extra tricks up its sleeves. It does have some EQ presets on the back and the DCM6 does not. However, the price difference between the two kind of tips you off for that. Now we have the DCM3, the SE DCM3 up against the Elgato Wave. Both of these microphones cost the same amount of money, $99 for either one. And this is the SE DCM3. This is what you can expect as you go back and forth between them. And now we have the benchmark. This is the SM58 up against the DCM3. This is the microphone that every other company should be trying to beat. It's $99 and frankly, it's a legendary stage multi-use microphone. The SM58 is classic. And this is the DCM3. While we're going back and forth, which one do you like? The DCM3 or the SM58? Now we have the DCM3 up against the SEV7, both from the same company, both different capsules. And this is what it sounds like as I go back and forth between them. 
There is a lot of stuff in front of my face right now. Now we have the SE DCM3 up against the RE20. So what do you think as I go between the RE20 and the DCM3? Now we've got the grandpappy of them all, the SM7B, up against the SE DCM3. How does this thing compare? Well, I'm about to find out. I'm about to go do this audio, so I'll let you know what I come across as well. Okay, let's start with the cons. And really, the plosives are the first thing on my list. That said, I'm a worst case scenario for them. I'm a bit of a plosive person and the unique style of the review has them more in front of my face than off to the side than usual. So your results might vary. Also, the mic handling is pretty rough. Not that these mics should be handled at all. And along with that, I was getting a bit of a resonant frequency coming through when tapping on the microphone. So keep an eye on that. As for the pros, I mean, this thing really did stand up well in the mic comparisons. It is a bright mic, but that does seem to be all the rage for people that are trying to get their voiceover into the mix or for gaming or whatever. It was much less abrasive than the Wave DX, was a lot more open than the SM58 with all that presence, and it was rather close matched to the V7. I mean, when you say that, that's really well done. Of course, it does fall off as you climb the list of microphones beyond that, but I should remind you, this is a $99 microphone, and the DCM6 is $149. For that price and this packaging, that's one hell of a deal. What I find amazing is that even with the bevy of options out there, SE doesn't have more market coverage. The V7 is considered one of the best stage mics. The Dynacaster, at least in my mind, a better price to performance than the SM7B, and frankly, every other broadcast option that is cheaper. So then perhaps it's the DCM3 and the DCM6 that ends up putting SE on everyone's lips. Now, what is really cool is that I now actually have another mic to recommend at the $100 price point. Before it was always just, well, go buy an SM58, which I know for a lot of people doesn't fit their aesthetic for video. Well then, how about this? As well, you have the added versatility of the Dynamite preamp on the DCM6 for only an extra 50 bucks. That means there's a solution for a lot of people that are just starting out. So let me know, which one was your favorite mic from today's video? Also, do you think these are gonna end up under the tree for you? Also, I wanna know, are you a fan of SE mics yet? If not, check out my review of the Dynacaster right up here. Yeah, not feeling well, you burped hand it. That's sexy.